And secondly, in terms of the world being vegan or vegetarian and the importance of such, what do you think will most inspire or encourage people across the country to adopt this important diet in order to avert a global crisis? How about <laughs> that we still have our planet? Hmm? <laughs> How about that we still can live here? How about that we don't have sickness again? How about that our children will be healthy, beautiful, intelligent, loving and kind? We all wish our children to grow up intelligent, loving and kind. But what do we teach them from beginning of their uh, very fragile life? Huh? What do we teach them? We push the symbol of violence into their mouth. Even if they spit it out, we force to put it back in again until they get used to it. Violence is a part of our life up to now. Violence is what we teach our children and we expect them to be loving and kind. Not only violence, that piece of meat or fish or animals stuff that we try to stuff into our children, unaware stomach, that also decrease their intelligence, decrease their loving quality, humanity. So we expect our children to be the best and we give them the worst. The worst of all the worst is meat diet. Okay? So, how about <laughs> promise that our children will be what we expect them to be without a meat diet? Huh? Intelligent, loving, and kind, and noble being. See? And how about promise of a repair planet with lush green forests thriving from horizon to horizon, clear rivers, clean stream, healthy living ocean, pure water to drink, without having to put chlorine or any chemical into it to even destroy our health further. How about all that picture of paradise? If we just put down that piece of meat and fish and dairy, whatever the animal piece that we want to put in our mouth, how about clean our system, make it healthy, alive, and not as a graveyard? You know, sometimes if we go through a graveyard, we feel so scared, right? As a kid, I was scared. How about you? Any of you scared when you walk through the cemetery, the graveyard at night, or even daytime? Yes. Yes, okay, okay. Imagine you yourself up the graveyard. Isn't that scary? Very. Very. <laughs> yeah. And day in, day out, 24 hours a day graveyard you carry with you. And so, okay, we talk more positive like Eva do, okay? <laughs> <laughs> okay. We picture, we show them, we invoke the imagination of such a revitalized and calm environment, healthy world. All the inhabitants will live together in peace and harmony. I know we are reciting that since time immemorial, but we have to do it now. We have to realize the harmony and peace, not just talk about it. We will live in peace and harmony as we never did before. Because in a vegan world, we think differently, we act differently, we live differently, we treat each other differently, our mind functions differently, our heart feels differently, our intelligence activated differently. There's no more reason that we can see for animals to fear humans. There's no more reason to make anyone suffer. For animals and humans alike, yeah? We will see no reason. We will see only reason to love, to protect, and help each other. And no more grounds for humans to fear one another because everyone will honor life and protect both theirs and others' life. Simply 
by being vegan. Your life will change. Your thinking will change. The whole being will change. Believe me, I know it because I've done it. You will change completely. You will love yourself more. You will have more self-respect and you'll be glad that you walk the noble way of compassionate vegan diet. Without this deep-seated fear for one another or from the animal, there will be only love, peace, both with animals and humans. The wise sages and thinkers like Pythagoras said, for as long as men massacre animals, they will kill each other. And Leo Tolstoy, the famous Russian author that every one of us know, also said, as long as there are slaughterhouses, there will be battlefields. It is like that, truly like that. If we are kind and loving to animals, we will also be even more kind, more loving to our human companion or human uh, uh, co-inhabitants. Without slaughterhouses, we won't participate in the habit of killing or even having the subconscious participation of the habit of killing. The habit of oppressing the weak and the defenseless and innocent just for our palate is, is really below our dignity. Our minds won't be in conflict so much between our wish to be compassionate, to be loving and peaceful, and our behavior that speaks louder than our words, the opposite. And further, with no weapons, no armies for battles, only time and energy and the financial power remaining for constructive works to better our society. Imagine what a society that would be. Of course, it's a heaven on earth. We will have the means and the fearless heart to solve poverty and hunger which themselves are in many ways a product of meat-eating. We will live in beauty and health and so much joy. The whole atmosphere will be brimming with happiness like a real paradise. If we become vegan, such a simple, easy step, we don't just win our beautiful planet back. We stand to gain an even more beautiful, wonderful, elevated world. Because the vegan lifestyle carries such a powerful energy, all positive, all loving, all constructive, all blessing, all intelligence, that could melt all the negative energy away, destroy it forever, and neutralize the destructive forces in our environment and in our lives in the shortest time that you could imagine, and then replace them with constructive energy and peaceful vibrations. Our original God nature is compassion and love. I repeat again and again and again, you are not that. You are compassion. You are love incarnate. Please return to it. And I wish you the best in this noble endeavor. Please help us. We help each other to save the planet and to save our children and save the animals. Thank you ever so much. Bless you all. Thank you. God bless you all.